a pastor preached, uh, he used a key no, um, scripture, was the seek first, which uh, was it, the uh, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And for a while, since I went to Guadalajara, I had this, this word that keep popping up in my head. This, this uh, key word is, uh, is seek, see, sight, vision. And, and, and the more I, I'm reading, the more I'm, I'm searching God's word, I, I see that, that, that it keeps popping up. And when Pastor used that message, uh, preached that message last Sunday, again, that, that word popped up in me. And my heart says, there it goes again, seek. And as we start to go, go into the word and try to get more and get, bring out as much juice as we can out of the, out of the scripture, I, I want to kind of just focus on a little bit before the scripture. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and er, we pause. Seek, seeking first the kingdom of God is using like, whatever you're going through is we're going to put God first as we're seeking the kingdom first. But I want to pause before I even go to that part. See, before you start to seek, you need to start, you need to be looking for something. You need to be in a mindset that there's something missing that you need to find. There's something that you need to open your eyes to, to be able to find. Because if you're not seeking, if you're not looking, then you're not going to find something that you're looking for. You guys are with me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So again, the word seek came up and it popped up. And when I was asked, to, can I bring the words to which is a privilege um i said exactly i knew what it was that i needed to say and so i go to the book of deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 30 and you apps people quick huh so we have the israelites coming out of egypt and they've already experienced the greatness of God, miracles of God. They've seen the miracles. They've seen the signs. Now they find themselves in the desert. And here they go again. A situation. They're right in front of a, a challenge comes before them. There's a king called King of Sihon. Uh, the king of Hebron, Hezbron. Sihon, king of Hezbron. And in verse 230 it says, King of Hezbron will not let us pass through, for the Lord your God hardened his spirit and made his heart abstinent, that he might deliver him into your hands, as it is this day. And the Lord said to me, See, I have begun to give Sion and his land over to you. Begin to possess it, that you may inherit the land. I thank you, God, for all his opportunities, Lord. And I'm a pastor, I think pastor caught on to me how I am. I'm not much of a pre-writer and structure myself. I'm more of a, I guess if I was a, a, a rapper, I'd be like a free, what do you call those, a freestyle? <laughs> I don't rap, but, and, and so I, I try to do it, and I, I admire when I see, even I see Brother Marvin and his structure, and it's beautiful, and the word comes on, pastor preaches, and I say, I could, can I do it like that? And, and it doesn't flow that way with me, but I thank God. Because I think it's God, and I know that it's God that does this in me, through me. So thank you, Jesus. So we have this situation. We find the Israelites now before they're about to cross over into a new land. And as they're going into this new land, they have a king of Hezbron. And they ask permission, can we cross through your land? We don't want to stop in your land. We don't want anything from you guys. We don't, all we want to do is pass by. And if on the way as we're passing by, if there's something that my people gets along the way, they will pay for it. If there's any water, if there's anything that they get out of the land, anything that they get, they'll, uh, they'll make sure that we'll pay for it. King Hezbron said, oh, nope, you guys can't pass by. And see, I find myself asking me the question that, here we all find ourselves in our lives that we think that, Lord, I, I need you, Lord, to come through for me, God. I, I have a need. And, Lord, Lord, I've been asking for work, Lord. And, and every boy that I go and apply, Lord, they close the doors. They say, no, no, you're not the one we're looking for. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord and every time I ask for my son, you know, he comes on late. And, and every time I see him, his mind is not in the right place. And, Lord, I see him. And every time that I beg you, Lord, I ask more of you, Lord. The more I see, Father, the more I see stops, God. You guys with me? I'm diabetic, so I would get very thirsty. (laughs) 
<laughs> and we find ourselves in, in this life as we go in our journeys. God, if you're for me, are, are you directing me? Are you telling me to stop? That I should that that's not the path for me? Is that that I should turn around and go the other way? God, what are you showing me? Because I have been praying, I've been asking, I've been, I've been begging, Lord. I've been fasting, I've been doing everything that I'm supposed to do. I, I've come to the altars. Lord, everything that I'm required to do, I've been doing. But all of a sudden, Lord, when the opportunity seems to be perfect for me to go through that, in that direction, you stop me. What am I doing wrong, God? Show me, Lord, what I, what I need to do, Lord. Teach me, Lord. And as I read this part of the scripture, and it just got to me here, because it says, For the Lord your God hardened his spirit and made his heart abstinent. Abstinent meaning hard is stubborn. That he might deliver him into your hands that is this day. Hold on, Lord. So you're saying that you made his heart hard, so I won't go through there. So that, that's what you're telling me, right? You're, you're stopping me. That, is that the direction you, you want me to go? You want me to stop and go back? What are you trying to tell me, God? You made his heart hard, so I won't go through it. So, let so let's read on. And the Lord said to me, see. See, I, I need you to see that I'm doing something. I need you to, to get this. I need you to understand that, that I'm trying to show you something. See, when Pastor took me to Guadalajara, and he said one thing. He said, I just, I'm going to take you so I can show you something. I need you to see something. And, and it was something I, even though I, I found myself challenged because I, like, I have my doubts about is it the ministry or the people or my own personal things, that challenges that I had, I said, do I really want to get involved? And when I got there, I was able to see that God had prepared some things, and that God was working in my heart. God was preparing me, and, but it wasn't until I was able to see. And here we have on verse 31, the Lord said to me, See, I have begun to give Sihon and his land over to you. I, I, I've already started this. The, the, the no, the, the challenge, the obstacles in your, in your path, everything that's sending you not to continue, all of that stuff is me starting something for you. It's I begun something. See, I begun to, I'm sorry, son and his lower over to you, begin to possess it, he says, if that you may inherit this land. See, we have ourselves in this life, and we don't know what direction it is, but we, I compare this life, and I share with a few brothers, and just recently today, the life that we have, people say Christian life is hard. I disagree, because I had life without God. I know how hard it is to be without God. I lived a life where I had to, out of my own hustle, my own grind, my own picking myself up. I know I've been there. I don't know when people say it's hard. You know what's hard is getting rid of some of your old habits. That's the hard part about it, right? It was hard you know, not trying to go back and try to fix it your way. And that's the hard part. But I'm sorry, but it says his burden is light. I, I, I 100 times prefer to be a Christian and be able to take my burdens. And, and, and where do I, I get all, everything that I've been carrying, everything that's supposed to push me down, press me down, break me, and be able to get that and say, Lord, you take it. I don't need to carry that anymore because your burden is light. Well, your yoke is light. So I, I don't know. So I must agree, disagree when they say that being a Christian is hard because I, mean, I don't know. I mean, because I know where I came from, and I don't want to return to that anymore. Amen. And, and it's, I think it's appropriate also to be able to uh, share today also. Yeah, we got, we're doing good on time. That's my little joke. That um, we're, we're in run for hope mode. And, and uh, as many times as we want to put ourselves and not, and not be able to jump aboard, maybe not like what they're talking about is maybe not for me. Maybe what they're saying, that's for them. Maybe that, that's for those that are seasoned. Maybe those that have been there for a while, you know, those that, you know, that caught on to or maybe have already been able to, you know, know exactly what that is. All of that, see, the reason why we, we can't get on board of that, because we can't see it. See, we, 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 we can hear it, we, we can, we can uh, you know, get around it, 
But it's not until you can get it and see it that you can jump aboard and say, see, because what, what happens is that you lack vision to be able to jump on board and say, I see, I, I can get on there because I believe in it because I can see what he's seeing. I, can, I believe what he's talking about. I believe what they're trying to do. I know what they're trying. They're trying to take the nations and trying to take the world. I see what they're trying to do. But it's not until you are able to see it that you can accept it. And you find yourself saying, yeah, that's, that's for them. That's, let, let, let them do it. Let them worry about it. In the book of Matthew 7, 7, it says, ask and it will ask and it will be given to you. Seek. And again, the word pops out at me. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. It's just because Amen. the ob- obstacles and, and, the, and the king come against me doesn't mean that that's not for me. Yes, the obstacles, we're all going to get them. We are, I don't know what it is you're facing right now. I don't know your challenges. I don't know what you need. I don't know if, if you can't see your, your son being restored, your, your marriage restored. I don't see if you can't see an outcome. I don't know if the rent is due two days late and you don't know how it's going to happen. You can't see your way out. I don't know how or what you're expecting, what's going on in your life. But see, it says right there, seek and you will find. See, you have to hold on to the promises of God and say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it. I know that you're going to do something in my life. I don't know how it's going to come about, but I'm going to hold on to your promises. And what your promises seek, and I shall find that's what I'm going to do. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to leave you guys with this one verse, and then um, hopefully we're going to get into prayer. And it it, it ties up together. Everything ties up together. And it's the uh, verse in 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, verse 9. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the hearts of man, the thing which God has prepared for those who love him. See, there's some things that God has prepared for you already, and you just in petition, you probably like, ah, it's not for me. You say, God, I got some things, greater things for you. I don't know. You know, you can't see it. You can't imagine it. But then, like, if you just hold on to what I have prepared for you, just hold on. And it continues and says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. And God, I, I, it's hard for me to capture that vision. It's hard for me to see those things when my light is disconnected, when my kids are not listening, when my husband is, you know, getting phone calls and walking away. Lord, how can I see it when everything tells me the opposite? So you have to hold on to the word of God. You have to hold on to his promises. Amen. Amen. And it says here, so I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which have God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to his heart. See, we're going to enter in a moment, a minute or so, into prayer. And there's many of us here that you know, when it's time to pray, and I see that they're praying church, when it's time to pray, they all come to the altar, and I see it, and I feel it, and I, and I appreciate it, and I say, oh, God, they know how to get a hold of God. But there will be a few that stay behind, and they'll pray, and they'll sit, and they'll wonder, and they have inside of them, Lord, I want to pray. I want to be like them. I want to feel that, Lord, but I can't get a hold of them that way. And so I'm going to encourage you today. So, see, there's something inside of you that brought you here to this moment now. There's something that has been pulling and tugging at your heart. Even though, although you cannot feel yourself, why are they going out to the front? Because they already know how to get a hold of God. But there's something inside of you that's saying, Lord, I want that. What is it? Because it's the Spirit of God inside you that's tugging at your heart, pulling your heart, calling you, come bring forward. There's some things that you need to stop focusing on, on the problems of the outside. And say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to get a hold of you, Lord. And that's the end. So when I ask, Father, when, you know, when the music starts, that you start coming forward and remove the clutter and say, whatever is attracting me to the altar, whatever is pulling me to the altar, listen to that voice because that's the Spirit of God calling you to come forward. And I'm going to leave you guys with that and I'm going to leave you with today's prayer tonight and I hope that you can take the advantage that today we can come close and get to know and reach and, and get a hold of God. 
you can leave all the clutter and maybe the things you don't find yourself being able to see your way out of some situations. You don't you find your way struggling. You know, God, I just don't know how you can save this or get me out of this. And that, that's why you get here. That's when you come here. Say, Lord, I, I, I surrender. I surrender, Lord. I can't continue fighting this. I'm tired of carrying it. I'm tired of trying to figure it out. I feel hushed. I'm trying to trust my way out of this. And you bring, come yourself forward. Get in front and give, leave it in the feet of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen.